Greetings, readers. Welcome to the second episode of the June 2024 edition of Library News. The library is in full swing this summer. What better way to celebrate the first month of summer than with books with the word June in the title, which is the theme for this month's D-List. D-Day, June 6th, 1944. The Climactic Battle of World War II by Stephen E. Ambrose, D.B. 38858. From an interview with Supreme Commander General Eisenhower in 1964, through the recollections of hundreds of Allied and German veterans, a military historian reconstructs the most decisive day of World War II, some strong language. Good Night June by Sarah Joy, D.B. 79544. 2005. June Anderson discovers she has inherited her great-aunt Ruby's bookstore in Seattle. As June settles the estate, she unearths letters between Ruby and children's author Margaret Wise Brown. Reading the correspondence, June realizes how she needs to change her own life. Some strong language. Junebug by Chris Fabry, DB74216. Nine-year-old Junebug and her dad travel around the country in their beat-up RV. One day, Junebug sees a missing person poster with her face on it and realizes her father may be lying to her. Meanwhile, in Dogwood, West Virginia, a grandmother continues her seven-year search. June by Loric Hopeland, DB107632 Like her sister before her, June leaves her Michigan home to embrace her future as a mail-order bride to a young Washington State pastor, but nothing works out as June expects. Caught up in her fiancé's vision for an elaborate tabernacle that would befit God's glory, she soon learns that not everyone approves of the plan. Letter to Olga June 1979, September 1982, by Vasla Halal, DB 31260. In 1979, Vasla Halal, a member of the Committee to Defend the Unjustly Prosecuted, was tried in Prague for crimes of subversion and sentenced to prison. During his imprisonment, Halal wrote some 144 letters to his wife, Olga. These letters, his only means of communication with the outside world, and his only opportunity for creativity, gave meaning to his life and helped him endure. Louisa June and the Nazis in the Waves by Laura Elliott, D.B. One, one, two, one, five, five. In 1941, after Hitler declares war on the United States, unleashing U-boat submarines to attack American ships, Louisa June, with the waves outside her house carrying dangerous enemies, must help her mother after her father and brother are caught in the crossfire. A Million Junes by Emily Henry, DB90067. For as long as June O'Donnell has been alive, her parents have had only one rule, stay away from the Angart family. But when June literally collides with Saul Angart, sparks fly. Everything June has always known is thrown into chaos. Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, DB103670. Brooklynite Eva Mercy is a single mom and best-selling erotica writer who is feeling pressured from all sides. Shane Hall is a reclusive, award-winning literary author. Shane and Eva had a brief relationship in high school, and when they meet again unexpectedly at a literary event, sparks fly. The 16th of June by Maya Lang, DB86819. On the 100th anniversary of the happenings in James's Joyce's Ulysses, 
June and Michael Portman began their yearly celebration with a funeral. Their children, Leo and Stefan, are dealing with their own stalled lives. Nora, Leo's fiancé, and Stefan's best friend grieves her own mother. The June Rise by Bill Tremblay, DBC 20763, brings to life the true story of Joseph Anton Janice's visionary transformation from a Missouri farm boy to an advisor to a Lakota chief, Red Cloud. For June's Magazine of the Month is Magnolia Journal. The magazine by Chip and Joanna Gaines, with inspiration for life and home, containing stories, recipes, tips, and useful information, available on cartridge and through download on BARD, published quarterly. This month's tech tip is how to help keep your electronic devices working. We'll share with you best practices for each of our devices from the library. Let's start with talking about updates. Updates help ensure security and continuing performance. If a device goes a long time without an update, you will may start noticing it misbehave and not working as you expect. Thankfully, if you receive cartridges regularly, your book player will stay up to date as we will include the update on the cartridge along with your books. For the NLS e-readers, if you have it connected to a stable Wi-Fi connection, it will automatically prompt you to update when a update is available. If you don't use Wi-Fi, that's okay. Simply give us a call and request a update be sent to you on a cartridge. Once you connect the cartridge to the e-reader, it will prompt you for the update. You can check the current version of your e-readers by going to Settings under About, and it will list the version number. As of this recording, We are currently on 2.0.1. Keeping your machines up to date will help keep them running smoothly and ensure you have the latest features. Hi, it's Brenna with this month's staff pick. I love sitting outside as the weather gets warmer, soaking up the sun while reading a great book. Currently, my favorite beach read is Tools of Engagement, DB10128. Eight three by Tessa Bailey. It is a contemporary romantic fiction book. Tools of Engagement is like HGTV's Flipper Flop meets Enemies to Lovers as perfectionist main character Bethany Castle runs into trouble during her first solo house flip. Bethany Castle organized plans and styles everything in her life to perfection, including the homes that she designs for her family's real estate business, making them the most desirable homes in town. The only thing not perfect? Her track record with men. She's on a dating hiatus, and after helping her friends achieve their dreams, Bethany finally has time to focus on her own, flip a house from framework to furnishings all by herself. Her older brother, who runs the company, refuses to take her or her dream seriously. With their rivalry grabbing the attention of a TV producer, Bethany and her brother are invited to participate in Flip Off, a competition pitting the two siblings and their renovations against each other. Nearly everyone in her brother's construction team refuses to jump ship to help support her, save for Wes Daniels, the new guy. His Texas drawl and handsome face got under Bethany's skin on day one, and the last thing she needs is some arrogant young cowboy in her way. As the race to renovate heats up, Wes and Bethany are forced into close quarters, bickering as they remodel the ugliest house on the block. It's a labor of love, hate, and everything in between, and soon sparks are flying. But Bethany's perfectly structured life is one kiss away from going up in smoke, and she knows that falling for a guy like Wes would be a flipping disaster. If you like Tools of Engagement, DB10283, by Tessa Bailey, it does exist in the same universe as her book, Fix Her Up, DB95608, and Love Her or Lose Her, DB98324. This book is a perfect read for a hot summer day.
The Iowa Library for the Blind and Print Disabled will have a booth at the 2024 Iowa Reading Conference. This year's conference will take place June 25th through the 26th at the Sheeman Building at Iowa State University in Ames. The theme for the Iowa Reading Conference is One World, Many Stories. For more information, contact the library at 515-281-1323. Another youth summer reading program is upon us, and we are very excited. This year's theme is Read, Repeat, Renew. Programs will be conducted virtually on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 2 to 2.45. Join Denise Bean, our youth librarian, for Guest Quest Mondays, Adventure in Arts on Wednesdays, and STEAM Theme Fridays. Ages 0 to 18 are welcome. For more information, go to iowalibrary.blog. The Iowa Library for the Blind and Print Disabled will also be hosting an eight-week STEM experience for teens 14 years and older this summer. There will be wonderful special guest speakers throughout the summer introducing different topics, and the teens will be using hands-on STEM activities based off of STEM scale-up kits provided to the library by the Iowa STEM Council. The library is excited to spend this time with this great group of people. The library is proud to announce that there is a finalist from Iowa competing in the Braille Challenge Finals. Nathan is a finalist in the varsity group for the second year in a row. He has been invited to compete at the National Finals June 23rd and 24th at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. Congratulations to Nathan. Please don't hesitate to contact the library with any questions or comments at 515-281-1323 or by email at library at blind.state.ia.us. The library is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Happy reading! Happy reading!